Globally, hypertension is a major chronic disease and it is considered by the World Health Organization to be a leading cause of death and disability in economically developing countries. Untreated, uncontrolled and unmonitored hypertension increases the risk of damage to the arteries, heart attack, stroke and is responsible for other conditions such as preeclampsia and cardiac illnesses. Blood pressure measurements are essential to diagnosis of problems in cardiovascular health. A traditional sphygma manometer requires that the user be trained to recognize subtle changes in low-level sounds. Students working at the Institute of Biomedical Engineering at the University of Oxford have developed a low-cost and easy-to-use device where a traditional cuff is connected to a mobile phone. The costly manometer is not needed. Well, the exciting thing about this for me is that um, the telecoms industry is just expanding rapidly and globally. This is going to give us an unprecedented ability to be able to monitor humans through GPRS, through their usage of mobile phones. And the advantages of using a phone, especially smartphones, uh, are astoundingly obvious to me, but the idea that smartphones are not going to be available to these people, I think, is becoming a moot point now. Now we have uh, a cheap, intelligent platform that we're able to monitor people uh, in um, a highly sampled environment, which means that we can avoid problems like aliasing and undersampling. It means that we're able to uh, stream data directly to an electronic medical record at the back end, so we're reducing transcription errors and human errors. And we're also being able to deliver this uh, this technology and the ability to monitor people's health and feedback information to them through existing supply chains. The system developed in this project is comprised of low-cost peripherals with minimal electronics. The peripheral only digitizes the pressure data and sends it to the mobile phone. Basically, the manometer is easily removed from a traditional sigma manometer, leaving just the cuff and the simple rubber hand pump. The pressure tube is connected to a small circuit board which has a USB port and a pressure nozzle. USB cable supplied with the phone then connects the peripheral to the mobile phone. The main processing is entirely performed on the mobile phone, which in the prototype is running Android. The Android application was designed with a very easy to use interface that guides the user through the process to ensure that good quality blood pressure measurements are taken. Uh, the application already supports seven different languages, uh, English, Spanish, Standard Hindi, Simplified Chinese, French and Portuguese. To take a blood pressure measure, the user starts the application by pushing the application icon in the Android device. After starting a new measure, the user is indicated to pump to inflate the cuff until the maximum value indicated in a real-time pressure chart is reached. The user is then suggested to deflate the cuff slowly to acquire accurate pressure oscillations. From the decreasing part of the acquired signal, we can easily obtain the oscillations waveform by applying a common bandpass active filter. The oscillometric method can then be applied in order to obtain the systolic and diastolic blood pressure values. After the blood pressure and the heart rate are determined, the user can create a CSV file with the pressure signal and save the measurement to the device database. He can then review his measures and add extra information to his last measure. The application also allows the user to save the blood pressure measurements not only to the local device database to provide review capabilities, but also to a remote system like Google Health um, to allow remote monitoring by healthcare specialists and remote data backup in a cloud computing environment. The project is currently at a stage where a prototype has been developed and passed pre-validation on a small number of healthy subjects. An in-house protocol was designed to check if the device was sufficiently accurate, comparing the results with the values given by a clinically validated commercial electronic device. Three blood pressure measurements on each of the five subjects were taken, one after lying down for five minutes, a second one after running for five minutes, and a third one after placing the subject's hand in a bucket of ice for one minute. And the results are very promising, with average errors less than 20%, which is within the tolerance of the commercial device. Therefore, a study involving a larger size population will be conducted during the summer in order to assess the real performance of the device. We really hope we can make a real contribution in the healthcare of developing countries by increasing access to accurate blood pressure measurements, improving data quality and facilitating longitudinal medical records.